Well, go ahead and get your Bibles out, get your notepads, get your papers, get your pens, get everything you need because, boy, do we have a word for you today. And so I'm bringing up one of my good friends, a minister in Christ that I respect with so much. You look so cute today. You you just look so cute. I wear our Women Rock sweater. But you look so adorable. Isn't she adorable? You all can say yes to the camera. (laughs) If you're on YouTube, go ahead and talk back to us. So our Facebook Live, we're at Facebook Live. We have YouTube. We have Instagram. We have our website. You can go to womenrock.us. I mean, there's so many avenues to get every service. So girls, get connected. Share, share, share. Let's get as many women watching the gospel. Michelle, will you give us the word today? All right. Love you. Okay. Girls, I am so excited that you have tuned in this morning. Okay, God does have a word for you, just like Pastor Jess said, and the worship team was amazing this morning. And I I think you girls are probably at home, like living the life, like having some coffee. You're probably all cozy with the rain just went through. And so how fun that the word of God is coming to you this morning, right where you're at. So let's go ahead and pray and let's jump into it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Spirit of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are everywhere. I thank you that you indwell us. And Lord, we are not missing out, Lord God. There is no FOMO with you because you are where we are. So Holy Spirit, use me. Bless your girls, Lord God, as they are at their homes, Lord God, or wherever they're at, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so it's been a wild six days, like for reals. All right. And uh, in fact, if you're online right now, I want you to just go ahead and put in the chats, whichever platform you're on, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, I want you to put your emojis that you have experienced this morning. All right. And we got a few girls here this morning and you girls, you can't get too close, but maybe you can just tell each other how you felt. Okay. (laughs) But um, I want you to put your emojis. Maybe, maybe mine would probably be the, the googly eyes. Like it was just a little crazy. Okay, I just feel a little wild. All right, but get on that chat and I want to I want to read your emojis after service. But I want you to do that cuz we're going to be connecting on the chat these days. So it's going to be good. The church of God is everywhere. She's worldwide and we don't have to worry about the four walls. It's all going to be okay. But I, as of Monday, I became a, a homeschooling mom. Okay. And you can raise your hand, you know, raise your hand in the chats and stuff in here. Anybody else become a homeschooling mom? And I always told my friends, I have homeschooling friends. And I just said, if I ever had to homeschool, I just feel like what people would say about me is, do you remember? Michelle, she used to be so nice. <laughs> like that's what I feel like was going to be said about me because it would just kind of drive me crazy. But we're doing it. We have the Vienna Wave Doomsday Home Homeschool, and we're making it through. And my kids are okay. You know, at our homeschool, we have a dance class. It may be TikTok dances, but but they're doing dance, okay? We have music class. It may be rock band, the video game, but we're doing music classes and we're just making it work. And that's what I wanna talk about this morning is that we are in the middle of history, to tell you the truth. We are in the middle of something that is so big in our country, in our world, that our children are going to be reading about it and probably our children's children, they'll probably have to do book reports. Um, if you remember 9-11, which who, who doesn't remember that? And uh, I want you to just think about, and you can write in the chat, where were you when you found out that it happened? Think about that. I remember waking up the morning that 9-11 happened. And I remember walking outside of my room And I remember going and seeing the TV because back then it wasn't that I rolled over and opened up my iPhone. (laughs) It was that I walked into the living room and I looked at the TV and I saw what had happened. And it's like, is this happening? And on Friday, when everybody was rushing the grocery stores, it felt, is this happening? Like, uh, what, what is going on? And so that was something that we will never forget. You know, maybe you, you know, maybe you can remember when we landed on the moon. And I want you to just type in, how old were you? Do you remember how old you were? Do you remember that feeling of watching it? Do you remember that? Because that's something that you'll never forget. And as our children are with us and ourselves and the people that we are surrounded by, we also are never going to forget this feeling and how mama reacted when all this stuff was going on. 
the feelings that our kids had, you know, when we were in the home for days and days and days. But I want to encourage you to be excited about your future because God is with you. You do not need to worry. You do not need to be afraid. This is big and this is worldwide, but I want to encourage you that God is with us. God is for us. And he has a word for you this morning. Go ahead and turn to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. And while you're turning there, and we should have it up on live stream and everything for you guys, but how many people remember 2008, the big bubble that bursts and the market just dropped and people were let go? And, you know, $100,000 college degrees didn't really matter anymore because you were still competing with someone who didn't have a degree for a job. You see, things happen, but we always bounce back. There is hope for your future. And in 2 Kings chapter number four, verse number one, it says this. I'm gonna go ahead and have a seat while I read it. It says, one day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, my husband who served you is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord, but now a creditor has come threatening to take, take my two sons as slaves. Verse number two, the prophet said, what can I do to help you? Elisha asked, tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, she said, except a flask of olive oil. Verse number three, and Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors, and then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told, and her sons kept bringing her jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her, and the olive oil stopped flowing. Now when she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil, pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what's left over. My message for you this morning is called Adapt and Live adapt and live. You see, this woman, this smart woman, she didn't know what to do. Her husband had passed away. He'd served the Lord. And now she found herself in a place where my sons are in trouble because of the debt that we have. And they're going to have to go into slavery so that they, so that we can get rid of this debt. This is what I have to pay. So she goes to the man of God and asks for help. You see, back in the days, the prophet of God was the mediator between people and and God. But nowadays, you've got the Holy Spirit. And I want to remind you that that mediator is living right inside of you, girlfriend. And so just like that woman, just like that woman, as she went to God, we need to learn to do that. We need to learn to seek God and to seek after him because that was wisdom on her part. If we're going to adapt and live, we've got to recognize that in this moment, in this time, things are not going to be the same. And it's okay. It is okay. We are going to learn together how to do church on live stream, feel connected. I know maybe you say, but I don't know the interwebs. Okay, we will teach you. I want to teach you. We will find each other, connect with us, and we want to help you call the church. All right, but we're going to work out this. It's going to be okay because the Spirit of God is living inside of us, and she, she adapted. So point number one today, I want to tell you what we can learn from this story is that we need to brainstorm with God. We need to brainstorm with God. You see, this woman was smart. She had a powwow with the man of God and you can have a powwow with God himself. And you can get on your knees and you can sit in your chair with your coffee because everybody's experience with God is different. You know, you may just have a, a, an inkling in your heart where you're thinking, you know what? I, I, I just feel I'm supposed to do this. That's probably the Holy Spirit telling you what to do. But she had a brainstorm with God because it's not panic time, it is planning time. It is planning time, girls, and you can do it. You are smart enough. You are strong enough. I don't care how much schooling you thought you needed or you didn't get, or maybe you're way above it. What's inside of you is the spirit of God. Get with God and brainstorm with him. You may feel housebound with your kids. Like you were like, the walls are getting smaller. Okay, 
First day of homeschool, one hour in, I had one kid screaming, throwing their paper, running to their bedroom. So it can't get any worse than that, can it? <laughs> and it did get better. And you may feel like, what am I supposed to do with these kids? Brainstorm with God. God, how do I be a homeschool teacher? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know, what, I don't know how to do this. And God's going to give you those little baby steps. You're not going to be perfect. God's not asking for perfection, and neither are your kids. They just want you. How about you feel a little like the walls are closing in because the guy that you are in social isolation with, you don't even like right now. And you're saying, we gotta be together for two to eight weeks? Are you kidding me? How is this marriage even going to last? But I wanna tell you, brainstorm with God because what seems like could be a terrible, wild thing could actually be a really good thing. You guys could start working out some problems and some issues that you've had, some things you haven't been able to say. Well, now there's nothing but time and no sports. You know what I'm saying? So now you got to talk, all right? And so just breach that. Go after it. Brainstorm with God. How do I, how do, I do this? Your business that may be in such hot water. Some of you are sitting at home watching this live stream. In your heart, you're saying, I should be at work. I would be at work right now, and you are devastated. And I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I'm so sorry that this is hard. And when, when we get into these hard times, it is very easy to become a victim. It is very easy to say to ourselves, well, you know, this has happened to me, so what am I supposed to do? You are not a victim. You are not a victim, girlfriend. Listen, this is happening worldwide. And it's okay to be sad that you can't go into work and you don't know what to do. And it's okay to be sad. I have a teenager that's crying because they don't get to go to prom. There's no senior prom for her. And she's crying. And, and it's okay to be sad about that. It's okay to be sad to feel like I'm gonna, I, I just don't know how I'm going to be with my kids this, this amount of time. I, I don't know what to do. And to feel those feelings, God gave us feelings for a reason. And it's okay to feel them, but we cannot sit in them forever. And we cannot sit and be a victim because you are not a victim. Be sad for a moment and then it's time to rise up. It's time to, just like Pastor Jess said, let's wipe that mascara, okay? All right, we'll wipe our little mascara and then we're gonna rise up and we're gonna do what God has called us to do. You know, I think of a story back in the days when there was a restaurant, it was a hamburger restaurant. And back in the days, everything was dine in. That's all you did was dine in. And one guy had an idea. He said, you know what? People are busy. I just wonder if I were to just cut a hole in this wall and what if cars could drive up and they could get that hamburger meal? And that, that restaurant was McDonald's. McDonald's was the first one to provide a drive-through. And now today, we can only do drive-through, like literally today. <laughs> like, that's all we can do, okay? And so they didn't change the burger. All right, they didn't change the recipe, they changed the method, right? Your kids are gonna get educated, it may be through you. I believe that finances are gonna come in, but it may not come in the same way that it's always come in. Brainstorm with God. The word of God's not gonna be you just sitting in a seat, come on now, but you actually are hearing it in your bedroom, you're hearing it on your couch, you're listening to it with your children. God is doing something. Don't miss the moment because you've decided to stay a victim. All right? Number two, what do you have already? So we're learning from the story of this woman. What do you have already? You see, the prophet of God heard her talking and he said, you know what? Uh, okay, all right, I want to help you. Well, what do you have? And you know what her response was? Her response was, well, I don't have anything at all. Nothing, negative. And then she said, well, okay, I got some oil. I, I have something, I have a little something. You see, again, don't, don't be the victim. And instead of saying nothing, oh, I don't have anything, Pastor Michelle, I, I don't know how to do homeschooling. I, I don't know where I'm gonna get money. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Okay, stop saying, well, I, I don't have anything. I don't have nothing. Listen, it's been six days. And if you wanna go to a church that lets you just, you know, pacify and just sit there, then okay, jump on another live stream. But girl, you lived in, you broadcasted into Women Rock. Women Rock, where we are gonna push you to be who God has called you to be. And you have something. You have something already in your hand. Maybe there's a business idea in the back of your mind that you're, you need to start creating and launching. 
All right. Maybe it's that little bit of fun education. Maybe you're not going to teach. You're not able to teach your kids like all this common core. Kids are learning carry the one, all right? The next few months, they're going to carry the one on the math problems. We don't know no common core, okay? But you, <laughs> you can teach your kids some home economics. That's not being done in school right now. You can teach your kids some budgeting. That's not being done in school right now. You can teach your kids, you know, maybe to write some stories or to draw or, or to do things that you already have. God is using what you have. And there is a fear, a fear about food, such a fear. God is your provider. Don't you forget it. And you need to declare it. And maybe you may not feel like you have all the meat in the world because everybody took it. Maybe you, maybe you didn't get two ply, but you got one ply, toilet paper. You have something. You have something. Be grateful for it and use it and be thankful. Number three. Number three is this, ask for help or help someone else. Ask for help or help someone else. Elisha said to her, he said, what can I do to help you? He heard her panic. He heard her worry. It was a serious situation. And he said, what can I do to help? See, Mr. Rogers you see Mr. Rogers and you think, okay, that's Mr. Rogers. I grew up with him on PBS. I get it. But what we don't recognize about Mr. Rogers is that he's, he's a child evangelist. Like he's an ordained minister who decided to go a different route and minister to children on TV. And it was very, very, very unique. And he, he said this on his show. He said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Look for the helpers. Be the helpers. Number one, God's going to provide for you so you can look for the helpers. God provided for this woman. God's going to provide for you if you need help. But you've got to reach out and ask. And then secondly, maybe you can be the helper in someone's life. Church, it's time to help each other. It's time to help one another. In John 13, 35, it says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. See, last week you could post a selfie in church and prove to the world that you went to church and you were God's disciple. Six days later, it's not like that anymore. We are proving to the world that we are God's disciple because we are loving one another and we are loving our neighbor. See, when things are good, it can be surface. Christianity can be surface. But when things get tough, things get deep. Things get deep. And when church goes online, it may be tough for some, but we are going to see who are the committed ones. Because the ones on the fringe won't be as connected anymore. But don't worry, because we are going to love them and we are going to reach out to them. We are going to reach out to them. You know, just a few things you can do, even if it's just bringing joy to your neighbors by waving and smiling at them. You can't touch them. No laying hands right now. Okay? But you can wave to them. You can smile at them. We're, you know, because in the Vienna Nueva, you know, homeschool, we have an art class that's live streamed from YouTube. Okay? From somebody else. And we're, we're creating art and we're hanging it in our windows. So that when people are walking their dogs or they're riding their bikes, they can see the art. And you just want to bring, at this point, we all just want to smile a little bit and feel a little normal, right? We want to feel a little loved. You know, on Instagram, I, find my, I found myself yesterday just, just randomly thinking, you know what? Lots of people are going online. Businesses need to go online. Maybe I can share what I know, which is not very much. But I went on and shared, you know, use this mic and try this lighting and do this. And I had no idea it would help so many people. Be a helper. What you do know, share it with people. I, I have homeschooling moms who are like, it's my moment. It is my moment. And they are standing up for the world to see them. And I have one mom who has DM'd me all this material. And I'm like, thank you. Mentor me. I need your mentorship. Okay. And so if you can help, help somebody. Number four, the last one is this. Do what you're told. Do what you're told. In the verses, let's go back into 2 Kings 4. It says this. It says in verse number five. So she did as she was told. And her sons kept bringing 
bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. She just did as she was told. You see, you are, you are on this amazing vacation with God right now, and he's speaking to you, and you're building a relationship with him that's your own. And, and he's going to speak to your heart, and everybody gets spoken to different ways. It could be through a Bible verse. It could be through journaling. It could be that still small voice in you. But just do as you're told and try it. If you're going to fail, who cares? We're all indoors doing nothing, okay? Like, it's all good. Try it and see what happens. Just do as you're told and watch as things are going to start succeeding in your life. See, she had to start a business. It wasn't even a choice for her. She had to start an olive oil selling business. That's what she did to get out of debt. Do you need to start something? Because I'm telling you right now, it's time to hustle and grind, girl. You can do it. Try it out. She had, she had to do something that she had never done before, which means she had to learn something and feel uncomfortable. It is absolutely true. The older you get, the harder it is to learn stuff. I feel, I, I feel like I can feel wrinkles happening in my brain. <laughs> like, I don't know if anyone else can feel that, but it feels legit. Like they are forming because this is so difficult to learn this program. Okay. But just do it. Just, just get used to learning and it's going to be okay. You're going to make it through. So girls, that is my encouragement for today. I hope you got something out of that. I want you girls to go ahead and just throw in the chat. If you girls got something out of it, just kind of give a little comment in there. But right now, I'm going to invite up some of my best friends and some of the wisest girls I know. And we are going to talk about some really practical things that we're going through this week. And that is how do we adapt and how have we personally adapted over the last six days? So um, tune in. And if you girls have advice and comments, you know, make sure you girls do that. But let's go ahead and talk to the girls. All right. <laughs> Was it? Okay. <laughs> I love just the simple, we're going to have to go a little shorter. I'm off camera probably, huh? <laughs> we're going to have to go a little shorter because online we know that you have kids running around, dogs wanting to go out to go potty. I'm trying to think of like what my life consists of. There's always somebody in the way, right? Yeah, yeah. But we're talking about adapting and I know that um, I was just telling Pastor Dan last night that you know, we were in a four-year transition. We're working on five years now of the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. And it took us forever to make one little move because we didn't want to mess things up or we wanted to hear the voice of God on it or, you know, it just took a lot of time. And within four hours on the, on the no on Friday, we had to like change things. And there's this meme that's going around of um, Friends. You remember that old show, Friends? And it's Ross and Chandler and all of them going up the stairs. And Ross is at the top. And they're carrying this massive couch. And it's saying, this is what pastors are dealing with. And it's like, pivot, pivot, pivot. And the other, others are like trying to move the couch to get it up and around the, the staircase. And he's just yelling, pivot a thousand times. Pivot, 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 pivot. And I'm like, Dan, that's you. You're saying pivot, pivot, Hilarious. pivot. And then at the very end, Rachel gets irritated with the word pivot. She's like, just shut up, shut up, shut up. And I'm like, that's me. That's so me. And so I know that maybe you're feeling that way just about, I don't get to go to church. I'm so frustrated. We've been hearing that from you girls. Like I miss being together. You know, last night when they made that new rule that we can't even bring people into a building, we can't do all these things. And I was frustrated. There was such a spiritual thing going on, like a tug, like all the verses were coming up and all the things. And we had to just really get with God and pray. And I watched the weight on my husband, like I've never seen him before. And he had to get that word from the Lord. And when he got the word, he had this release. It was almost like, oh, there you are again. Hi, you know, and he slept good last night. We slept good last night because when you know you're in the will of God, yeah. when you know that you've done something pleasing to the Lord, that even in the hard times, even in those times where we're learning how to adapt, like you just talked about, which was so amazing. I wonder how easy it is for us to really recognize the moment we're in. Because it took me four years to work through a transition, right. but it took us four hours to begin pivoting Preach. a massive oh. ship, right? And so I'm wondering how many of you are sitting at home going, 
Oh my goodness, how am I going to pay my mortgages? How am I going to pay my electric bill? Like, how am I going to find eggs? I just want eggs. Would everybody stop buying the tortillas? I mean, where is San Bernardino? Where are my women in the church? Start making me some tortillas, all right? Let's do a tortilla exchange, women rock. Yeah, honestly. Because this white girl does not know how to make them, but I will eat your tortillas. (laughs) And so that is where we can really get good. You know, I before I left work today, adapting. Think about who you can help. I love that. Who can I help? Because we have a neighbor, and I just love them. And um, he's battling cancer right now, and she has diabetes, and I know they're in their house. And and I looked at Dan this morning. I'm like, I don't get to go over there today, but you go over to their house, and you ask them what they need, and I will go on the hunt tomorrow for them. Because you need to find out who needs something. There's someone in your neighborhood. Maybe call your grandma. Call your auntie. Do you need me? I'm going to go out. Do you need anything? And you guys be the helping hands. Be yeah. Jesus to these people. And I love that you're doing the signs because in my neighborhood, people are, are making these like canvas, they're getting canvas and they're painting on them. And there's one says, we're in this, we're all in this together. Wow. And they hang it from their house. The other one said, smile. And then I'm like, oh, I'm putting a scripture. I'm going to like, let everybody know that Jesus is coming and he loves you. And, um, you know, and maybe just put Jesus loves you. And uh, so girls, let's be the church. What does this look like in our homes? So. Awesome. No, good, good. Okay, Pastor Tracy, it's been a wild week. What have you done to adapt and keep your sanity? And peace. Well, I mean, there's so many practical things that, that, you know, just having to deal with the kids and get really creative. And I have them <clears throat> practicing musical instruments. We made a list. You're going to spend half an hour doing this. And then you're going to practice some writing. And then you're going to... So we've had to kind of put a little structure in the structure day, you know. Good. And good. Um, but I really, honestly, that peace that you feel is something that you have to get from the spirit. It's something so deep and so inward and you just recenter and you find, just like you were saying, like, oh, there you are. You have to find that connection with God and then you can kind of be yourself again and go back to normal. And um, we've been clinging a lot to Psalm 91, which is so perfect for these days, but it's for someone specific. It's for someone special. And the first line says, he who dwells in the secret place. So all that protection and all those promises are for the person who is dwelling in the secret place. And the secret place to me is just being connected with God where you are talking back and forth and you are truly, really connected. That's your secret place because it's happening in your mind. It's happening deep inside. And if you can stay that connected with God, you're in the secret place. And you will be, you can say with confidence, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand. Because I'm in the secret place. I'm right here with God and we're talking. But I wanted to mention a couple of barriers I've had to push through to get to that place. And, um, and this is not just in the past few days. This is in like the past few months and years to find that secret place. Number one, um, and please hear me out. If we get too fleshly, we will not have that same connection with God. Mm. What do I mean? I mean, in the Bible, he always contrasts being in the spirit and be connected with the Holy Spirit to being just a little too focused to natural things, whether it's anxiety or whether it's pleasure. Mm. So it's never the devil versus the Holy Spirit, Satanism versus flowing in the spirit. It's always fleshliness versus the Holy Spirit. He, you know, and I was remembering, he told Peter, get behind me, Satan. He didn't say, because you're worshiping Satan and channeling demons and finding wizards and wishes, no. (laughs) He said, get behind me, Satan, because you are concerned with the things of the world, the natural things, not of the things of God. So we have to be really careful. And for me personally, that looks like I'm on screens too much. I'm watching too much TV. I'm just feeding my flesh a little too much. I'm eating too much. I'm, um, or on the contrary, it's not just, it's not just pleasure. It's also anxiety. I'm, I'm considering all the details and figuring things out too much. It's too much in the flesh. It's too much in the natural. And we have to get into the spiritual things and turn our back on those things and just say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm getting pulled into this world a little too much. That's right. I need to connect back again with the Holy Spirit. Another thing is if you have a guilty conscience, you've done something wrong, could be something big, could be something small. You on the inside and your subconscious, you'll shy away from God. 
You will. Yep. You won't have, maybe on the outside you're like, God, I want to connect with you. But on the inside you're like, ah, I'm afraid of what you're going to say because I ate the wrong thing the other day or because I was angry with my kids the other day or because I just knew I, you know that you did something wrong. So get that taken care of. Just, just so repent just say, okay, I blew it. Just get it out there and receive the, the, you know, the blood of Jesus is stronger than any sin anybody could ever commit. Let him wash you. To have a clean conscience means you feel free with God again. You have that connection all over again. So that might be something to just find that secret place. You know, sin consciousness is going to keep us out. And then just keeping your relationships up up to speed. Make sure you have forgiven everyone. That will be a blockage. Um, just forgive, forgive. Keep those uh, accounts real short, you know. So those were just a few things I've had to do to just keep that connection. And like you were mentioning, could be with a cup of coffee with your journal. Could be through some praise and worship. Could just be, you know, uh, reading your Bible or getting out in nature and just having this connection with God. It's it's a lot of different ways, but, but try different things. Find out what helps you find that secret place with God. Good. Yeah. Great. So good. What about you, Pastor Sue? Well, um, I was going to share Psalm 91. <laughs> no. I had a feeling. No. no, it's so neat because a couple weeks ago, I just had it in my spirit to really start meditating on Psalm 91. And it was funny because I came into the work that day and Pastor Jess was sharing Psalm 91 with us at staff meeting. And it was, um, it was just, I woke up with it and just the need for kids to know Psalm 91. And I was blessed several years ago, several years ago, to teach school for a couple of years at my kids' Christian school. And both years, I had my class learn Psalm 91 the whole way through. So by the end of the year, they had it down. And I wish I had it memorized that good still now. But, um, but God just took me back to that, to just spend time really meditating on it and, and asking myself, do I really believe this? And I was so um, blessed by what Tra- Pastor Tracy was sharing because one thing we do have now is time. You know, we can't blame the fact that we're getting up early and we're, you know, hitting the freeways and the traffic of the commute and all that kind of stuff. We do have time. So we are without excuse, but, you know, just to realize that God's given us that gift of time to redeem some of this and, and get back to some basics and really ask ourselves those hard questions we're, when we're in the word. Do I really believe this? You know, I think there's a temptation a lot of times to hear stories like the woman with the olive oil, like you were sharing, and think, wasn't that a great story? And involved in children's ministry, we teach that to the kids and things like that. But, but to stop and go, this really happened in her life, <laughs> that she went to the man of God, he told her this, and she was obedient, she did it, and God provided a business for her. And, and, and it, it's so true that we need to look around and see what's in our hands, what resources we do have. I know before it really hit, um, I had already planned on a little St. Patrick's Day party with my granddaughter and uh, some friends of my, my daughters uh, that are her age, there was like four little kids, And we had planned it just because I had her on that Tuesday anyway, and you know, and they hadn't really said, don't go anywhere yet. But I think it was like the day before they said, don't go anywhere, you know, stay in your house. But we'd already planned it, it was four little kids. So um, anyway, it was just some little things I got at the dollar store, but we had so much fun and we taught about St. Patrick and how he took the gospel to Ireland. And he had been a slave in Ireland. He had been kidnapped from England and a slave for six years in Ireland, and God gave him a vision and told him how to go to the coast and ask a ship captain captain to take him back to Ireland, uh, to England. So he went back to England, studied, became a missionary. God spoke to his heart and told him to go back to Ireland. At that point, Ireland didn't have the gospel. And that's why he's the patron saint of Ireland. But anyway, it's just a wonderful story. And then we colored shamrocks and talked about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and and all that. And it just turned out to be a really cute little party. But, um, you know, things like that, God can just give you a creative idea that gets you out of those you know, mully grubs, you know, that make you want to just look at everything negative in your life, you know. Um, Just go to his word, spend time with him, let the Holy Spirit give you the joy of the Lord. I appreciate what Pastor Jess shared with me this morning. God spoke to her heart and said, make me bigger. Keep God bigger. I mean, this is the God that created the 
systems in our body that knows how to make water go up the root of a little plant and cause a flower to grow. I mean, he's big. He's so big. And so he knows the end before the beginning. He knows this is all going to be good. He's going to redeem every moment and work it for his good. And so we just need to be walking with him and hearing from him and rejoicing in everything good and wonderful he's doing in our lives. So good. So good. Pastor Jess, what have you been doing? You know, um, adapting. Well, we've been here at the church. Yeah. I haven't even got to go home yet. I'm almost looking forward to going home and actually making a schedule for my kids. I was already like, they're staying home today. Do not let them get on their devices all day long. Yeah. You know, like, and so um, I know my life is very different than others, but um, I have been, you know, going shopping. That is quite a feat. So I'll, I'll tell this story. Pray and ask God for everything you do because you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you and he's working on your behalf. And so I woke up on Tuesday morning and Dan and I had been through so much, we pretty much told our staff, leave us alone, like we're taking a Sabbath. We don't care if the world falls apart. We are taking a Sabbath. And our Sabbath looked like going grocery shopping, cleaning the house, like things like that. But we did it. And when I got up in the morning, I was looking at the mountains and this is what you were talking about. I was just like taking in the beauty of God. There was snow on the mountains. It was like the most beautiful day. There was blue skies. And I was just like not praying for anything specific during this moment, but just kind of like in awe of God. Have you ever had those awe moments? Like, wow, you're so good. And the Lord said, I do this So you remember to always keep me bigger than any problem that you're coming up against. And it's like, if that's a word for you today, just remember that no matter what you're coming up against, God is always bigger than what it is you're facing. And so I said, okay, Lord, he said, what do you want today? And do you know what I asked him for? I asked him for eggs. (laughs) Like I need eggs. And, um, And so I started texting my family and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going out, I'm going into the wild. Like, do you guys need anything? And of course they all needed eggs. And I'm like, oh man, okay. So I made Dan get up. He's not a morning person. And I was like, we're going on a date. And he was like, we're going on a date? We haven't been on a date in forever. I'm like, I know, but we're going and you're going grocery shopping with me. (laughs) Because I figured if they limit us, then Dan is another person and he can go buy some more eggs himself, right? And so um, we went to four stores. I even called stores and said, hey, do you have me? I called farms. I called everywhere I could go and I could not find eggs anywhere. So it was probably about 9.30, we're driving home and I was just like, well, that's okay. We got some stuff, we'll make, we'll make it work. And when we get home, I call my mom and I let her know, hey, we don't have eggs. She goes, well, okay, I'm gonna head out anyways. I'm gonna go to the store myself. She gets a strike of this phone call from my mom and she's like, hurry up, get down here. They just are releasing the eggs at Albertsons. <laughs> but I can't get them for you because they're limiting them to one person. And so I, I'm pulling Dan, come on, get in the car, kids, we'll be back. And so we're in the car and his mom needs eggs. My sister needs eggs. We need eggs. And so I'm just like, how are we going to do this? There's like one less person. So Dan went in and he's across the store with his eggs. I'm across the store with mine. We cross each other in the store. He's looking at me, talking to me, mouthing something. I'm like, I don't know you member. Like, don't, don't, we don't know each other. And so we get to the car. He's texting me in the car. Where are you? It's like, co- like we're like undercover egg shopping, you know, like, so then he gets in the car and he goes, I didn't get my mom eggs. And he's like, I got to get her eggs. And I'm like, well, listen, dude, take your hat off, take your glasses off, take your vest off, put your t-shirt on. He changed his whole cognito and went back in. <laughs> and he was like, I don't feel like this is dishonest. He's all telling you, I don't feel like this is dishonest because it's for someone else. And I'm like, okay. And we were able to give the eggs to everybody. And when I got home, I heard a little whisper from the Holy Spirit and he said, see, you got your eggs. And it was like, yeah, you totally made that happen, you know? And so it's the little things. Maybe it's not gonna come the way that we think it's gonna come, but just be ready to adapt to whatever circumstance you're in. I mean, I'm like, I feel like the word on my heart is flexible. Just be flexible. Be flexible to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your day. He might change your path or your course or your talk. And, you know, I have had to learn this because I'm a planner. I like to know what's ahead. I like to know what things are doing. I'm very like, and I have a husband who's like, let's just fly by the seat of our pants and go to the beach today and have no food or the kids don't even have bathing suits. Like, and I'm just like, no, but I'm learning 
even in this, to just be at rest in who the Holy Spirit is and let's just go with the flow and not allow myself to get upset. And so I think that's what I'm learning and adapting to these new changes. So if hopefully you can yes, get something from Yes, I think that. those were amazing tips. So girls, you know, I think you give a little hand clap emoji if, uh, <laughs> if you like their tips.